August 8th of 75. Uh, the Lord had given me some prophecies. And I began to bring them. And I was told by an evil spirit that if I kept bringing them, that he'd take my life. I didn't believe him, but he did. So I went to the Lord in death. And as I come close to the Lord, I saw that all the people that was in our line, he asked them only one word, did you learn to love? I saw that about 2% of all humanity was in the line I was in. There were 98% that was in another line that was wrapped up in their gods because we're going to spend eternity with our gods. And if it's Jesus Christ is our God, we'll spend eternity with Him. So as I stood before Him, and I was getting ready to tell Him, Yes, Lord, because He only asked you, Did you learn to love? And I was going to tell him I had, but he said, I want you to go back. And I told him I didn't really want to. But he said, go back. Because I'm going to bring a billion souls into myself in one great wave. And I want you to touch a few of the leaders that I'm going to use uh, in that time. And I told him, I'll go back for souls. But he did show me parts in heaven. And we've got five senses. In heaven, all five senses are beyond anything that I can tell you. For there are fruit there that you can bite into. And the nectar is is as sweet and as joyable. Uh, there's nothing that I could ever compare on earth. Uh, sound there. Uh, everything that makes a sound there makes praise. The wind blowing through the trees is praise. The rippling waters are praise. There's songbirds is praise in there all the time. Uh, you can hear the songs of praise. Uh, your eyes see nothing but beauty there. Uh, your nose will uh, smell fragrance. Your taste. And the feelings there were the, the greatest because I felt so secure. I felt literally wrapped in love. I felt that uh, I was asking uh, the faceless man stood beside me, what is this I feel? And he said, that is uh, the love of God that surrounds you. And I said, it's so white and it's so beautiful. What did he said? It's also the glory. The glory and the love. And that is the 17th, John 17. The glory and the love he had from the beginning. And you're literally wrapped there. You have no thoughts of uh, bad thoughts. You have no nothing demonic penetrating your brain. All five senses are, are beautiful. The sounds, the praise. And there you meet people and you know them without talking. And you can literally uh, 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 answer questions without conversation. And there, if you're in the valley and you want to be on top of the mountain, you can be there as fast as a thought. You can go underneath the sea and talk to the fish. There are valleys there of dinosaurs. And you can go look. Everything is created down here this is a type and shadow. It's the real thing up there. So while I was up there, uh, that's what I saw. I also saw the, the saints that went before me. And some of them, like the Apostle Paul, I wanted to ask the question. And the Lord says, no, you don't get to ask the question. He gets to ask the first question. And I was saying, why? He said, because you're part of his testimony. And Paul's testimonies won't be finished until the last of the saints are saved. And his testimony then finished what he did. For our testimonies go on into eternity. You lead somebody to the Lord, they lead somebody to the Lord, they're part of your testimony. So we're continually building a testimony. I want to ask you how that relates now. Just we got about, clear, about just a short time period uh, about the sons and how that relates now what God is doing with the sons of the kingdom. Well, what he's doing now is bringing, there's been a new birth. I believe we're babes. But I believe it's going to grow into sonship. 
And I believe in the next two years you'll see an escalating of sonship. And I believe you'll begin to see the Holy Spirit cleansing out those that will be clean. So clean in the Spirit, in their spirit, to where they can totally have communion with God. For if your conscience is totally clean, which is part of your spirit man, then you have communion with God. And if you have communion with God the Spirit in you, then you have at your disposal the wisdom of God in your spirit. So I believe there's people whose living rooms, whose mind is being cleaned out to such an extent, their their mind, their will, and their emotions brought into under the control of the, of the Lord to where it's going to be spirit now. Uh, not so, but spirit. And I see within the next two years of, of the Holy Spirit really dealing in our conscience that we don't violate our conscience in any way. If we do, we immediately repent of it. For with a clean conscience, you have communion with the Holy Spirit. And in that communion, you have the wisdom of the ages within you. The Holy Spirit is the creative power of God. And I see that men have been literally born anew, uh, as uh, uh, 1 Peter 2, 2. And they're born to the Spirit. We were born on the Logos Word of God, but now there is a new thing going on. And now we're being born to take from the, from the Spirit of God as newborn babes, nursed from the Spirit of God. And it will be pure, unadulterated, and sincere. And it'll be in the Spirit. Not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit. And I see overcomers coming that are the sons of God because they're led by the Spirit of God. So if you're led by the Spirit, you're a son. Literally, to put it another way, that which has been birthed are doves. And a dove represents the Holy Spirit, but it loves represents peacemakers too. And the peacemakers are the sons and daughters of God. And they are birthed now. And they will have the wisdom of God how to make peace. But when I was before the Lord, all five of my senses, all five that my soul depends on, were more alive, were more blessed, my taste, I could taste greater. With my nose, I could smell all the fragrance. In other visions to where he came other times and took me to heaven. And I entered in, there's seven levels up there in heaven. The throne is on the third level. I don't know what goes above that. But you're continually growing in heaven, just like you do down here. Only up there you don't have any devil opposition. Down here you have a lot. And you know, the greater devil opposition you have down here, the greater you are in heaven. Because you've had to fight greater wars. Some people that are really, be, that are really uh, in great leadership down here, they don't have much reward up there because they didn't have to fight much. But some people are just coming out of carnality. And out of the bottom of the pit. Man, they got beautiful mansions up there. In one vision, I saw one of the most beautiful mansions up there. And a woman had it by the name of Corey Tenboom. And the Lord said, She pleased me. You want to copy after somebody? Because she copied after me. She really lived in humility. I want to tell you, sisters have just as big a testimony up there as brothers do. Now, my own way of seeing this is their beautiful mansions in heaven was created in them down here by what they endured. You want a pretty mansion in heaven? Then grow up down here because that mansion that's built by the Holy Spirit's you. You're the house the Lord builds to dwell in. And I mean that Cory Ten Boom was built by the Spirit beautifully down here. But in heaven... Her matching showed. She was that match, and so were you. The only thing that is not settled in all creation is you. 
If the Lord wanted to build kingdoms or anything, he'd speak it into existence. You are the mansions he's building. You are the land that he wants. You are the holy land that he's raising up for his use. And you grow into humility. And you grow up in righteousness, taking on holiness. And you will be a beautiful mansion that the Lord will inhabit. Just throw that in without any charge. I was taken to the first level. And it was like eternal springtime there. And just the... You might say those Christians is saved by grace is the only one I was comfortable on. And as I went there, he took me into a beautiful meadow. And it was like spring, only the light wasn't like a sun as we know it. It was like everything was light. In, in the kingdom of heaven, everything is light. The flowers are light. The water is light. And they're just different colors of light. And so he took me there. and I just wanted to lay there in that meadow. It was, I mean, peace all over. The peace is beyond anything I can describe to you. I wish I had words, but I can't do it. And so that peace was there. And as I would just lay down in the grass and the flowers, uh, it was like I was light. And I wouldn't hurt the flowers, but I could smell them. The sense of smell is beyond anything you can imagine. Can you imagine all the flowers in the earth? And all the nectar being poured into one drop and put underneath your nose. It's like you can smell all the nectar of all the beautiful smells on the earth at once. It was like everything on the earth was first in heaven. And then brought down here as a blessing. Uh, they were fruit there. And the Lord picked some fruit and said, taste it, I tasted of it. But I love uh, apricot, especially when it's real juicy. And it was sort of like a real juicy, ripe apricot. Oh, it was. Oh, the taste was beyond anything that I can describe do. And then I listened. I was right by a brook. And it was running down uh, some trees on both sides of the brook. And I could hear the water running. And the water was singing praises. And I could see the wind blowing like in the pine trees. And it was praising too. And they were birds sitting on the branches of those pines. And they were singing praises. And the Lord said, look at those. Those are the songbirds that I loose to the earth, to the body. So that's why I call the praisers the songbirds. Because when they start praising in the spirit, one of them birds from up there just comes and sits on their shoulder and begins to sing in their ear and so they just repeat it I mean that's the way it works so these songbirds we've got here is because they've been anointed by those that sent to them and so sound was beyond anything I can tell you all the sounds there were so pleasant there wasn't anything that irritated your ear uh, they were s s uh, the saints were being taught or were in praise or in song. The songs there were so beautiful. And the music was beyond description. And uh, it was just the contentment that was in me. Uh, I had a desire that I could have just stayed there for thousands of years without moving. Uh, the feelings that come over me. When those songs and everything had come, they were feelings like just a wave would come through my body. And the feelings, one of the sense of feel, was just, as, as the praisers would come, it would be like a ripple would come through me. And that's what's going to happen in this body too. It's going to come like this, like a ripple. And then it'll come like this, like a wave, again and again. You're going to start seeing. That was sound and feelings, hearing and feeling. And as I already told you about my eyes, everything that I seen was beautiful. He took me to the second level of heaven. It was likened to the first. Only the light was more severe, hurting my head. I wasn't mature enough to enjoy it. 
Then he took me to the third heaven and to the throne room. And uh, literally those that mature in the last days in the church of Philadelphia, they're the ones that will be in that third heaven. But there I couldn't stand it all. I had to hide behind Jesus. Jesus was like colored sunglasses to me there. And I had to look through him to even see any of the things going on there. And I was begging him to take me back. The only place I was happy with was the first level. And that's where all the, literally the baby Christians went. That's why I was content. But that third level was so much light and glory beyond all the other levels. And the saints in heaven are continually growing and growing and going from one level to another. They're continually ministering to one another, teaching one another. They're doing many things. Their activity is there. But the third level, its light was so bright that it was like the light of platinum or like gold. And uh, I was very, very uncomfortable there because the light was stronger than what I could bear. So he took me back down to the first level. And that's where he's taken me quite a few times when I go to heaven. And that's where I've seen some of the saints. Uh, he won't let me talk to the saints, especially some of the disciples, the apostles that become apostles, because they got a right to talk to us first. For you see, you're part of their testimony. And your children, and your children's children, part of their testimony. So they're waiting to see how their testimony winds up as we're one another part of one another's testimony. There's not any private thing in the body of Christ because every one of us cross-pollinate one another's lives so much that it's really one testimony down through all history. And we're the end product of all the suffering, of all the breakthroughs, and all the prayers, and all the praise that's ever been in the body of Christ. And your children will be the product of what you go through as your grandchildren, and you'll see your grandchildren. But you are in that end time, and you can expect these revelations of what I'm speaking about to increase because in the movement of the Spirit, these five senses that your mind depends on to run it, you're going to have to submit them to the Spirit within you. And you're going to begin to understand how to do that and how to move in the Spirit. Because it's the five senses that you move in, exercising the senses. Get ready to understand Hebrews 5.14 on a level like you've never known before. And especially 6.1, because you've got to go through 5.14 before you get to 6.1. And the best way I could say about 6-1 is just uh, maturity. Uh, growing up in righteousness, the place that you can take hold of holiness. It's really what it's saying there. And you do that by destroying your carnal five senses and making them look to the spirit within you for the answer. For the answer is within you. You're going to learn how to do it. It's your choice believe no matter what your five senses says and that TV and the radio is saying believe that God's got it all under control he does and that you are the beloved that he's been waiting to put on his knee you are and that his love is towards you it is get ready to love in a new way that you've never loved before in Malachi 4 and verse 6, the Lord says that he will restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And one of the things that I think we need so much in this day is to sit at the feet 
of fathers of faith, those who have gone before us. And in a few moments, you're going to meet some really good friends of mine, Bob Jones, who is a seer prophet. And uh, he is in his elder years now and has so much wisdom to give. Many people don't understand seer prophets because they see in visions and revelations and have supernatural encounters and mystical experiences. And Bob Jones in our day is, is I think, one of the uh, champions of the seer realm. In fact, as a prophet, he's probably one of the most accurate prophets in our generation. But he is going to share some insights with us. And, you know, I just love sitting at his feet. I've known him for a few years now. And every time I'm with him, he just gives these, these nuggets, these really special nuggets that are so rich and so beautiful. We also have Todd Bentley with us today, who is another favorite of mine. And he's from the younger generation. And uh, he's just a young man who's only known the Lord for, for a few years, I think around 10 or 11 years now. And he's been in, mini no, actually he's been in ministry for 10 years almost now and he's just like uh, just an awesome uh, man of power who is also a seer but a miracle uh, working evangelist and has brought many people over over a million souls into the kingdom in eight years of ministry in his first eight years of ministry so we just happened to be in a meeting at a conference and we hauled them into a hotel room and threw a camera up and said would you just share with us please would you just share some things and hang out so we just threw the camera up, took some uh, footage of it, and they're going to share with you. We're going to let you in on that time in the hotel room in just a few minutes after the break, okay? Todd, I remember um, years ago, yeah. you gave me a phone call and you said, hey, I've just been soaking with Bob Jones and I've gone up into the third heaven and all that. And, and it was all new to me. I'd never even heard that kind of language before and I was so hungry for yeah. it. But tell me about the first time you met Bob and you know your encounters into the third heaven. Yeah, well, the first time that I had met Bob was actually in Grants Pass, Oregon. And uh, we were sitting in a restaurant and um, I was really hungry. I knew Bob was a real seer prophet. And I thought, Lord, I'm going to get an impartation. I've been having all these encounters and all these visions and experiences already soaking. But I thought, Lord, I, I need to talk to somebody that's been walking in this. That's really a senior prophet. And so when I met Bob, I thought, Lord, I'm going to I'm going to get an impartation. And I, I remember talking with Bob in a restaurant about, you know, going into the heavens and what it was. And we were talking about the third heaven and going into the immediate abode into that place of the dwelling place of God. And I thought, that's awesome. I was hungry for it too. I wanted more because up until that point, sovereignly God was just visiting me and I was just waiting in his presence and sovereignly God was visiting me. And Bob said to me, he said, well, we can go right now. <laughs> and I said, I said, what do you mean we can go right now? Like just, we can make a decision right now and enter into that realm of the spirit. And he said, sure we can. Don't you have faith, boy? Or something like that, right? <laughs> That's what he said to me. And I remember Bob took my hand. And uh, everyone else at the table, I don't know how many, maybe 20, 30 other people were yakking at the table. It was quite noisy. A lot of other leaders there. And Bob just takes my hand like this. And he says, all right, here we go. And he says, close your eyes. And I remember closing my eyes. And Bob said, okay, there it is. Can you feel it? <laughs> all right, here we go. We're, we're, we're going in. Whoa, we're going in. We're going in. And all of a sudden, I felt myself going up. I felt my body being lifted up. And it was moving really fast. And then he was like, can you smell it? Mm -hmm. There it is. Can you smell it? That's what you said to me, Bob. And, and you said, it's the vanilla. And right when Bob said the vanilla, I said, I smell vanilla. And then we started smelling all these other fragrances of the anointing. And then he said, okay, let's bring it back with us now. Can you smell that vanilla right now? I just saw it coming and whipped wow. in from here. That's, that's the yeah. fragrance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, that's the fragrance. I can feel the wind. As, as you yeah. said, yeah, the wind. I can this feel the cool wind, wind right blowing on, on my arm. Yeah. Right no, that's not natural because this room's full of hot lights. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We turned the air conditioner. The whole yeah. table. Yeah. Remember, the whole table felt it, though, wow. or smelt it when we came yeah. back, Bob. Wow. They weren't pressing in with us, but they were all able to come into the experience right. with us. And everyone at the table started smelling just like now. 
that anointing. Well, I, I remember when, when you were telling me about it, I got so hungry for it. And right after that, Bob was coming to a conference that we were having in Kelowna, the Dunamis conference. So I picked him up from the airport and I, I was like, you know, I was going to just ask him all kinds of questions about this third heaven, you know, because yeah. I wanted it. And I wanted to experience God in, in a new way. And I think we all do. We're so hungry for him, yeah. right? But I did, I hadn't caught yet. Because you told me about the experience, but not about the faith dimension. Yeah. So I was just still still thinking sovereignty. Yeah. You know, God's sovereignly going to move, take me up, well, whatever. So I'm I'm asking Bob questions, and Bob, you said, well, I do my raptures every day. I said, what do you mean your raptures every day? He said, I go up every, every day, and I said, you go up every day. I would love to go up every day, and he said, well, it's by faith. Yeah. And that, I said, what? Do you remember that? Yeah. You were saying it's by. faith. And I always operate everything else by faith, but I never dreamt that you could have a supernatural encounter stepping into it by faith. So the next day, in the lunchroom, I'm asking you more questions around the speaker's lunchroom, uh, around the table. Yeah. And you said, well, do you want to go right now? I said, right here? Right now? Like just in the lunchroom? <laughs> <laughs> and you said, yep. And you stood me up with the same thing. Yeah. You said, give me your hand. Yeah. And I closed my eyes and said, okay, just by faith, you know, follow the Spirit. And um, I never sensed anything, never saw anything. I was waiting for something to happen. And then, um, and then I saw this little tiny glimmer yeah. of light, kind of like, but I thought it might be a reflection from the window because my eyes were closed. I thought, well, maybe the window is over here. Maybe it's light. And then you said, uh, do you see that little light? It's a flicker, fl flickering flame, I think you said. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's seeing inside this. This must be it. But yeah. it was so subtle and yet so profound. Yeah. It starts relationship. We were seated there in heavenly places when we were born again. Yeah. And when we go there, we start a relationship. And there's where you can begin to see things. I think it's very important that people go to the third heaven because if they've got hooks in them down here, when they go past the second heaven, the hooks come out. Wow. So whatever the enemy's got hooks into them, when they go up to the throne, they're coming out. Far above all power, yeah. might, yeah. dominion, you go above the warfare. Do you remember me telling you, Just I want you to really notice the winds? Yeah. When you go into the third heaven, the angels come to greet you. Mm -hmm. The winds come on you. That's right. And then uh, a lot of people see a lot of different colors. But when I take the children up most of the time, they see the white light. And they see the white throne. And nearly everything they see up there is white. Mm. And that's what God is, is white light. Which has got all the colors in it. Yeah. And up there they see one another as white light. For they are light. Wow. So, I remember you saying to me one time. You said, if you can teach children. Yes. To ascend into the third heaven. And live out of that place. Then you will have a generation that will not be affected by the devil. Because the devil can't go there. Isn't that profound? Yep. Well, youth and children... They hardly have any problem at all going there, especially 6 to 12. They go right up, and I've seen uh, take them up and turn them loose. And then after you turn them loose, the first thing they do, they'll come and tell you what they've seen. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times with them, I uh, let them tell me what they've seen, then I interpret it to them. Yeah. And then... Uh, sometimes I will say, okay, go up again and see what you see for me. <laughs> and I'll tell you, some of the most pure prophecies I've got come for some of them six, seven, eight years old. Wow. And some of the conferences I've been in when youth go up, I'll tell those as the speakers of the conference, you won't bless, go let the children pray for you. Yeah, that's true. And see, they go continually there. They haven't been taught the doubt that we have here. I might share something I've already shared today. I have a friend that is a missionary to Africa. 
And he was pastoring 1,700 Assembly of God churches. And last year we were talking. And he was telling me about how often they raise the dead there. How that healings are normal. Uh, how that miracles are normal. How that casting out the enemy and the lepers cleansed. And how often it's a common thing to raise the dead there. So I asked him, my, what's wrong with Americans' faith? And he looked at me and he said, nothing. Americans got the greatest faith of any nation I know of. I said, well, there's something wrong over here. He said, well, this is it. Over there in Africa, they worship devils for many, many generations. They know devils. And when they see a power greater than the devils, they don't doubt it. So when they see it and they see... And the word of God comes, they say, this is God. This is a greater God. This is really God. And it happens. So, in America, what's keeping back these things is doubt. Well, not lack of faith, but the presence of doubt. The yeah. presence of doubt. We've actually been taught, taught doubt in church. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we're coming into a new born again experience in the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Well, that rhema word of God doesn't have any doubt in it. Mm -hmm. I think that old time religion has been burned out of us. Yeah. And a new desperation put in us. Well, we've had the greater God all along. Yeah. We've been like the brother of the prodigal son. It was there for us all the time. We've been doing the right work. It's all been there for us. Mm -hmm. Now we need, really like, born anew. In uh, 1 Peter 1, 4. Into an inheritance. Mm -hmm. uh, a little like born anew. Uh, uh, like newborn babes in uh, uh, 1 Peter 2, 2. And I believe what we've been born of is we were born again in the Logos Word of God. And what's getting ready to take place, we're being born anew to where we're not uh, 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 drinking the Logos Word of God, but that we're going to be drinking from the Spirit of God mm. in uh, 1 Peter 2 2. Yeah. And out of the Spirit of God, when you begin to drink from that, that rhema word of God in you, yeah. as I've already shared with y'all. Yeah, it opens the heavens. When you have that rhema word of God in you, it is really the sword of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is our Father's word. Yeah. And it's the sword of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Then recently he showed me that it's not only the sword of the Spirit, it is the keys of the kingdom yeah. of binding and loosing. My daddy's word is saying, and binding and loosing, what I have bound in heaven, and I give you that rhema word of God, then you can use that sword as the keys of the kingdom to close off the second heaven mm -hmm. and open the portals of the third heaven. All we have to do is agree with what God is saying, yes. with what God is saying, and it opens yeah. that, his realm. Yeah. Why does man need to speak? Because uh, the Father's given us all power. Yeah. That's right. He will not violate His own word. Right. But He has given all power to the church. That's right. And so when we begin to proclaim out of our soul and agree with Him, then God and you are a majority on the earth. Yeah. That's right. Bob, um, you are such a father as a seer, but also a man who's paid a tremendous price to open up um, just the dimensions of the supernatural to the body today. And I just, for one, want to say thank you for paying that price. Yeah. And I know that over the years there's been so much misunderstanding because the things of the spirit cannot be understood by the natural 
man. Yeah. They have to be discerned by the Spirit. Right. And you are actually the most spiritual man I know. And I just want to thank you for being there for our generation. And you have carried that faith in what God's shown you. And you haven't wavered. You've stayed, stayed on it. And as a result, you are now raising up the little eaglets all over the place. And the little eaglets grew up and then produced more eaglets. Yeah, and you're are. still looking after them. But you carry such a mantle of faith for the Father's love and for the realms and dimensions of the supernatural, invisible, real, tangible kingdom of God. And then, Todd, I have to say that I, I just know no one like you no one like you and you represent the younger generation that is um, going after by faith the reality of the tangible yeah. kingdom of god and it's like it is so refreshing you need to know that it's so refreshing to find someone who will get the glimpse of the truth and run with it and not let it go and you also have gone through so much opposition so much resistance so much warfare you know where the enemy at times has wanted to just take you out but your faith has kept you yeah. it is an unshakable faith and a lot of it is based not only on the revelation of the word that's been given to you but the tangible experiences that you have had right. in the glory right. and this is so important in this hour yeah, that we have the revelation of the word the understanding of the word but also that the body has the experiences yeah. in the supernatural dimensions of the kingdom because it's the children's bread that's right and what i want you to do for our viewers right now both of you and maybe you can join hands maybe we'll all join hands yeah. together and we'll just look in this this, this camera here we're, we're going to release the spirit of faith, because yeah. that's what has been imparted to me through both of you. Yeah. Uh, Bob, you imparted to me a faith to believe that I could access what the word said in the realms of the third heaven experience, the realms of the supernatural. And I went after it because of that. Yeah. Todd, you have demonstrated to me a faith beyond anything that I've ever seen that has gone after things, that has pressed in for healings. I watched years ago when, 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 when no one was manifesting healing, you weren't shaken by it at all. You know, you would rejoice over someone's little yes. tingle in the finger, you That's know, right. if it showed up, you would just go after that in God. And now you're winning, you know, over a million yeah. souls to yeah. Jesus Christ and many of the yeah. Muslims and, and um, you know, uh, people that were serving the devil, witches and everything yeah. because you believed right. and because you experienced the supernatural. Right. And That's both of key. you are just wanting to give to the whole body. It's not like you're not wanting attention for yourself you want attention for jesus yeah. and you want the whole body to come along with you That's so let's join do. hands right now and right into this right. camera here we're going to uh, pray and i want you to pray for that spirit of faith to be released yes lord that spirit of faith that tangible substance faith is a substance and we're saying let it come yes, lord. that spirit upon each yes, one lord. right now round the world to, that spirit of faith being imparted right now, that gift of faith yes, being released, that energy, that virtue being released into the faith. It's coming alive. It's resurrecting. It's being imparted right now. A spirit of faith to believe for things that you've never been able to believe for and it becomes easy. It's a grace faith. It's easy for me to believe what God said. I have a grace upon me to believe for the supernatural as I've never believed before we're releasing that in mm -hmm. I have a faith for the supernatural to become the natural in the body of Christ mm. yeah. and let this supernatural faith come Whoa. and replace the stupor that's over the body of Christ yes. Yes. that apathy that it would blow it away yes. and let the, the sunlight shine upon the body of Christ mm -hmm. so they could begin to see who they are for once it clears They'll begin to see that they are the sons and daughters of God. Yes, Lord. And that they're really called not so much as to have the faith in God as to have the faith of God. And we're coming into that place now when the Father speaks to us. And we will then have the faith of God within us to proclaim uh, what He has uh, spoke within us. So get ready to begin to see the faith of God coming forth yeah. out of those that are people of faith that have heard in their faith and in their faith they shall speak and they shall speak in agreement with the Father 
and it shall come to be. Amen. Bob and Todd, I want to thank you so much for being who you are before God and for giving him the glory that you give him and for, for contending for all of us. So on behalf of the body of Christ, I want to say thank you. Wow. Jesus. Destiny Words are prophetic words of encouragement from the heart of God just for you. We are in the time of a paradigm shift. No man really knows what's going to take place beyond this because we don't have the faith to receive it. The thing, we are in the time of an awesome change and for the better. Mm -hmm. A paradigm shift, a coming forth like we've never seen before. And literally the mysteries of God and the mystic realm of God opening up to where it becomes available to the born again Christian. We're in the time of the release of the sword of the spirit. Yeah. And the sword of the spirit is not for defense. It's for offense. And as we use the sword of the spirit. We are going to begin to take the offense. Uh, concerning cities. Yeah. Concerning our families. Concerning churches. For the Lord is looking for a people that will raise up in warfare with the sword of the Spirit, which are the keys to the kingdom, and begin to invade uh, where the enemy has came in, push him back out, and begin to take again the things that belong to us. Uh, this sword of the Spirit is going to take back the crafts, the gifts, the music. Yeah. As we begin to take these things back that we gave away, we're now going to take back. And out of that, you'll begin to hear the new uh, music that will bring forth faith, crafts uh, that will reveal Christ, and inspired pictures that will literally be prophecies a yeah. hundred years from now. That picture will be a prophecy as long as it survives. And one thing about an inspired picture that these artists are going to begin to draw, they'll speak the same language all over the world. For the picture itself will speak the language of Christ. So we're coming into a, a paradigm shift like we've not known before. And this sword of the Spirit will make a way to where there's been no way. For as we've gone through the things that we have. These, these people the Lord is getting ready to use, sort of like Todd was saying, these burnt stones that's been burned in the body of Christ are getting ready to be built into a temple of living stones so that they can cohabitate with Papa and the Spirit, Ephesians 2.22. So get ready for a temple to be built now that no flood no storm can blow down because it'll be a round temple. It'll be literally like an elevator right into the heavens to where people can go and come uh, literally as will and begin a relationship in the heavenly realm and begin to get the words for themselves. I believe that our main job is to equip a people that can outgrow us and replace us. When we have people we've trained go past us, then our life is fruitful. That's good, Bob. That's the key, isn't it? Yep. Fruitfulness. Yep. 